Hello everyone and welcome to this wonderful course on control systems. I'm your instructor here to take you throughout this journey on control systems. This is the first lecture, so let's start with the session outlines. In this presentation, firstly we'll discuss the introduction to the subject to what we study. Then after that, we'll discuss the reasons that why we need to study this control systems or the advantages of using control systems. And at the end, we'll quickly see the syllabus and the target audience. So let's start with the introduction to the subject. Control systems are an integral part of modern society. Numerous applications are all around us. So to study the control systems in a predefined manner, let's start with the statement or the definition of control systems. A control system consists of subsystems or processes assembled for the purpose of controlling the output of the processes. It simply says that a control system consists of subsystems or the processes assembled for the purpose of controlling the output. Note this statement, controlling the output. So we can say that any control system will take an input, it will process the input in a predefined manner and it will generate a desired output. For example, an air conditioner maintaining the temperature of the room. Now in this case, the air conditioner is the control system and the maintained temperature of the room is the desired output. Example number two, a car moving from rest to a speed of 100 km per hour. Now in this case, the car or the elements present in the car are the control systems and the speed of 100 km per hour is the desired output. Example 3, a lift moving upwards. Now in this case, the lift is the control system and the desired floor of the building is the desired output. So all these are the control systems controlling their respective outputs. So now we are done with the statement of control systems and we have understood some of the examples. Now let's understand this in a better manner with the help of a block diagram. If this is the block diagram of any control system, then on this side we have the input or the stimulus to the system and this is the desired response that we want from the system. On this side we have the output or the response of the system to this particular input and this is the actual response that we get from the system after the process is done. Every time, the desired response is not same as the actual response. And the difference in the actual response and the desired response is the error of control system. We will discuss the input, the output, the desired response and the actual response of any control system in the upcoming lectures of this course. As of now, we just know that any control system will take an input, it will process the input in a predefined manner and it will generate an output. So now we are done with the block diagram of any control system. Now let's move on to the question that why we should study control systems or the advantages of using control systems. We build the control systems for four primary reasons. Power amplification, remote control, convenience of input form and the compensation for disturbances. We will understand all these reasons with the help of a practical example. Suppose we have a radar antenna and we wish to rotate this antenna through a certain angle. Then in that case, we will use a rotating knob and we will rotate this knob through a certain angle and the radar antenna will rotate through the same angle. But note that the power required to rotate this knob is quite small as compared to the power required to rotate this heavy antenna. So in that case, we need to amplify the power and we use motors for that purpose and motors are control systems. So now we understand that we need control systems for power amplification. In this way, we are done with the first reason. Let's move on to the second reason, which is remote control. Again, whenever we need to rotate this radar antenna, we use rotating knob. And this rotating knob is like a remote control element for this radar antenna. We can have one more example a remote controlled robotic arm that can be used to pick up materials from a radioactive environment. So the control systems are also useful in remote areas. In this way, we are done with the second reason. Now let's move on to the third reason, which is convenience of input form. Again, whenever we need to rotate this antenna, we are rotating this knob or we are repositioning this knob. In this way, we are changing the form of the input. We can have one more example in this case. Suppose we are inside air conditioned room and we need to decrease the temperature inside the room. Then in that case, we will use the remote control to decrease the temperature of the air conditioner. So in this way, the control systems are also useful 
to provide convenience by changing the form of the input. In this way, we are done with the third reason. Now let's move on to the fourth reason, which is compensation for disturbances. This is one of the most important reasons to build a control system. And we will consider the same example to understand this particular reason. Already we are having the radar antenna which is pointed in a commanded direction. Now consider a case in which wind forces this antenna from its commanded position or noise enters internally. Then in that case, this radar antenna itself has to detect the amount of error occurred and it has to correct that error by itself. Note that we do not change the input according to the disturbance. So the control system itself has to deal with the error that has occurred and it has to correct the error by itself. And in this way, the control system compensates for disturbances. So now we are done with the introductory portion of control systems and we have discussed the reasons to study control systems. Now we will discuss the syllabus and the target audience. Talking about the syllabus, we'll firstly discuss the basics of control systems in which the very first lecture will be the system response characteristics. And in that lecture, we will discuss that how the output of any control system vary with respect to the input. And after that, we will have an introduction to the open loop and closed loop systems and their comparison. Then after that, we will have a review of signals and systems in which we will mainly focus on the Laplace transform and their properties. And after that, we will discuss the transfer function of any LTI system. Then after that, we'll have a concept of feedback and the types of feedback. After the completion of feedback, we will discuss the sensitivity of control system. And at last, we will discuss the concept of dominant pole. In this way, we will discuss the basics of control systems. After the basics of control system, the next chapter will be the block diagram reduction and the signal flow graph. In this chapter, we will discuss the basic rules for the block diagram reduction and the Mason's gain formula for calculating the overall gain in the signal flow graph. After the completion of this chapter, we will move on to the next chapter, which is the time response analysis. In this chapter, we will discuss the transient response for first order system, the transient response for second order system, the concept of damping, the transient response parameters, and we will also have discussion on the steady state and the steady state errors. In this way, we will complete this chapter and then we will move on to the fourth chapter, which is the stability. In this chapter, we will mainly focus on the routh hurwitz criteria for the absolute stability of any control system. After the completion of this chapter, we will move on to the fifth chapter, which is the root locus diagram. Then after that, we will move on to the frequency response analysis chapter. And from this chapter, we will completely switch to the frequency domain. In this chapter, firstly, we'll discuss the frequency response parameters of a control system. And we will have discussion on various frequency response analysis techniques like polar plot, Nyquist plot, and Bode plot. Then after that, we will move on to the next chapter, which is compensators and controllers. And after completing this chapter, we will move on to the last chapter of control system, which is the state space analysis. And this chapter is the complete different approach towards a control system. We will discuss various state space parameters and the state variable representation of a control system. We will have discussion on the conversion of state variable models to transfer function. We will also discuss the conversion of transfer functions to canonical state variable models. Then after that, we will discuss the solution of state equations. And we will also have the discussion on the concept of controllability and observability. Along with the theory discussion, we will also have many previous year gate problems in order to have a better understanding in the concepts. And for your practice, we will also have many homework problems. So now we are done with the syllabus discussion. Now let's move on to the target audience to see to whom this course is actually intended to. This course is definitely for the students preparing for GATE and other competitive examinations as this course is designed according to the official GATE syllabus. Along with this, this course is also beneficial for the college goers who have the control systems as a subject in their curriculum. Thank you for watching this lecture. I'll end this lecture here. See you in the next one.